I, I think this is the perfect example that, that Chestertown is going through right now with the short-term rentals. Because the short-term rental involves a lot of different things to try and regulate it properly. Um, and we have, need to take into consideration property rights, um, rights of neighbors who also have property rights, quiet use of, of my property, um, parking on a public street that everyone's entitled to. Well, what about an inspection? Well, you know, uh, if I'm spending $400 a night or something, I want to make sure that, that the handrail isn't going to fall off or that there's not rickety wiring in the bathroom when I fl flick the switch. So, you know, right now we don't do any of that. We don't require an inspection. We don't require licensing. All we do is want to make sure that they're paying their taxes. And that's, that's bare minimal. But there are, there are vacation places all over the, the country that are wrestling with this much more fiercely than we are right now. I mean, our, our, our discussions, I think, have been very civil because um, when the neighbors came, and this was especially the case at the last meeting we had, I, people not only understood the other one's position, which is a start. You know, I'm a good landlord. I'm not your problem. Yeah, you're right, but you're not every landlord. And, you know, I understand my neighbors. I have good neighbors, too. I don't want to put 15 people in, in the backyard all of a sudden. So that, that's going to be a longer process. Um, uh, one of my f former employers is after, since 2019, still wrestling with it. So um, I hope we're not where we still are five years from now. Um, but there's still more discussion to have. We've got a draft ordinance. There's been comment on the draft ordinance. I don't know if that's made your way. It certainly has made our way by way of people commenting on it. And some of those comments are very well thought out. And it's all going to make for a better process. As contentious as it can be, um, because you know it's been contentious elsewhere, um, I, I was encouraged by the level of not necessarily um, agreement on foundation, but respect that there's foundational points of view. And at least from the foundational points of view, um, basic agreements can be ironed out. Again, I think most people would agree that um, an annual license saying, now, so why well, isn't a three-year license? Well, it can be a one-year license, three-year license, two-year license, five-year. We're, we're getting into the operationals of it, but the idea that it is licensed and registered and somebody is a point of responsible contact for what goes on at that property, that the town, whether it's a police department or you know, anyone else would be able to, here would be able to have access to, um, have you noticed your back door's been open for the last two days? Have you noticed, you know, a strange car that hasn't moved off the property in the last week? So there's, there's, there are things that need a responsible point of contact. Now, whether that person lives in the zip code within 25 miles, within 10 minute drive, on the other side of the moon, I think all that needs to get worked out. But I think there's a common, I think that's a foundational, a shared foundational agreement. It's like, yeah, somebody needs to be in charge here. And somebody needs to be that point of you know, responsible contact here. Uh, same thing with the inspections, right? the safety inspections. I think everybody agrees, whether that's one year, two year, three years, but everybody agrees, yeah, there should be you know, uh, uh, smoke alarms, um, the ground fault circuit interrupters, uh, not rickety handrails for somebody to fall down. Uh, if, if it needs to be ADA compliant and advertises as such, it needs to be ADA compliant if it's going to advertise as such. So there's, again, a commonality, I think, of understanding that that's a found, an agreed-upon foundational point, but what it looks like, how often it's enforced, what the scope of it is, that's all, that's all the art of this and not necessarily the science of it. Because not everybody's going to agree that that's something that I don't, want, I don't need that on my property every year. I'm a responsible landlord. I'll go in and fix the handrail. Counterpoint to that is, well, if this is owned by an LLC on the other side of the moon, they never know the condition of the handrail. All they know is what is, 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 the, is this property exercises or operates rather as, as, a, as a cash register for them. And that's, again, that's a, two different perspectives on ownership. Well, what kind of owner are we trying to regulate? And that's a part of a bigger discussion. But again, I think that's one where, when that discussion is going on, there needs to be the level of, res not the same level of respect to each other, 
although it's good to see that, but there is a level of commonality of understanding. And I don't necessarily have to love the people I, I, I do any kind of interaction with, but if we're on the same commonality of understanding of why we're here, that's a start. It's when people don't even feel that they need to be at a table because they're never going to get a fair share at the table or the table's not for them or the game's wired against them, rigged against them, whatever. That's when entire systems fall apart. Yeah. Hey, hey, blank question. When someone rents a place to live, should they, should they be renting a place that they can have confidence is um, protecting their physical safety? Yeah, I want the doors to lock. I want the, fire, the smoke alarm to work. I want the handrail to not fall down when I lean up against it. So sure, okay, well what's that gonna look like for you? Okay, now the tough part starts, but at least there's the foundational agreement. That's why the, 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 the overreach sometimes is where we get into, well, do people get two parking spaces on the street? You, because of the nature of the street, of each street, you're never gonna make people satisfied. And as a result, we've gotten perhaps too far into the weeds that, and that's gonna prevent um, a reasonable uh, piece of legislation and regulation from being passed because we're trying to, I don't know, overthink it, overanalyze it, over critique it. Um, if someone has got a, a you know a one bedroom apartment over one of the downtown shops that they rent out, well, off street parking isn't going to be a concern for them. They don't have it in the first place. Whereas if somebody rents a house with a driveway then it's like, yeah, okay, I think off-street parking needs to be a consideration. Um, your, your guests can park on the driveway. They can park on the property and get off the street and not put more wear and tear on the neighbors. And again, there are a lot of communities that go through that sort of thing. Old, nice old houses close to the waterfront, 40-foot wide lot, never had a driveway, can hold 10 people, this weekend, 10 people show up for a family reunion and bring six cars with them and a boat. Okay, well, I tell you how that's gonna work on the street. It's not gonna work well. So these are the sorts of things that, you know, we need to give some consideration to. And you don't wanna say on a case-by-case -case basis, but depends on what kind of unit's being rented, there's, there, there, there needs to be a different understanding of what, again, on-street parking, off-street parking is gonna look like. I think we're going to, my expectation is we would get hung up on that one for a while because I don't think there is any commonality of, of agreement on parking in the first place throughout mo most of town. 